Hi again, it's Dave and this is my weekly update on my Nissan Leaf RX-8 conversion. Hope you're all keeping well. Lots of progress again, trying to keep things rolling along each week. Uh, big thank you to Daniel, uh, the BMS has arrived, the replacement one, which is good because it shows that I didn't break the BMS uh, with the wiring I've got. I potentially, I guess, broke it when I took it out of the Leaf unit. But yeah, it's the only way I can think that I caused the damage. Maybe I touched two contacts together to create that short that's then caused the damage on it. Can't think it occurred in the Nissan Leaf when it had its accident. It may have done, I guess, but I can't, I can't see it. I think it was me. But having the replacement one here now has proved that my wiring here is good and my understanding of the cabling for the BMS is all, is all correct. And I haven't blown this one up, which is great. Quick flick round now and I'll just show you what I've done with the code because I've finished the BMS code now. So here we go, you can probably just about see that. That's an output from the BMS. You can just see the last, what, 10 cells there. Each one at 4.07 volts. There's one there at 4.08. Uh, you can see if the shunt is on or off. That's just a zero if it's off, one if it's on. One up there, I think, there you go, just there. Cell 80, the shunt is on for whatever reason does appear to balance continuously all of these were much more out of balance there were about a whole load of them at 4.08 and they're all nearly at 4.07 now so that's interesting temperatures they do work they show in degrees celsius uh, the cable's not plugged in currently so that's not showing got the high voltage battery there 392 volts which is accurate the low voltage battery which is my car battery uh, you can see it in there uh, state of health, 95%. I'd imagine that's the state of health of the pack that this BMS came from. Probably isn't very accurate for this. Uh, these these cells that I've got. State of charge is a bit interesting. I, it's just displaying a bonkers number. If anybody's got any explanations why that is, then please comment below. It could be my code. I've been through the code pretty thoroughly, and I can't see it being my code. So I'm still looking at that. I'm not too worried at this point, because it's not something I need right now. Capacity, 80.18 amp hours is pretty spot on from what I can tell the batteries. Uh, I think the full capacity is about 85 amp hours. Current, currently not doing anything. That can show me negative current and forward current. I've programmed it to uh, do both ways. So that's really good. That's pretty much everything I need now from the BMS. And um, and means I can now take it apart because, as I've shown previously, I've got the wiring to do. I want to tidy up all of this with Cat5 cable have it all nicely cable managed out the way and um, be a lot neater and a lot easier to deal with when I put it in the car. So all of this I'm going to document, document how it's all wired up, document the connectors, document it all. There's the replacement BMS which is brilliant and chugging along nicely and I can then get all this unplugged and, uh, and tidied up a bit. So another bit of interesting news is you may notice that there's a big blank space <laughs> here where my motor, inverter and charger was sitting. If I move over here slightly, you'll see tucked on the shelf here is the charger and tucked on here is the inverter. So the reason that I'm missing the motor is because if you see my previous video, I've now taken apart the previous RX-8 EV that I built and I've got the gearbox out and the original adapter plate, taken those and the motor and I've given them to a local workshop in town. He's brilliant. He's got all the old machinery that you'd expect for metalworking and modern CNC machines as well. He is stacked out busy. It took him about three months to do my adapter plate and spline previously, but by giving it to him with kind of back of the fag packet plan of what I want, he gave me a motor coupled perfectly to the gearbox. So it's worth the wait. I've been chatting to him and I don't think it's going to take this long this time because Previously we were trying to get the clutch to work and there was complications around mounting the flywheel to the motor that we had. In the end we just binned the clutch and then he had it done in a couple of weeks. So hopefully with this one we're not going to have a clutch. All I need is another adapter plate to connect to the adapter plate I've got. It's going to be about 40mm thick. Uh, that's going to push the motor slightly further into the or away towards the front of the car because it doesn't fit otherwise it hits the bulkhead and um, hopefully in a couple of weeks I can get that back and just get that mounted in the car that'll be the motor and gearbox back in the good thing is as well is that the adapter plate that I had built for the previous motor had the engine mounts attached to the side of it so by continuing to use that and having an adapter plate on the adapter plate it means I don't have to tinker with any of the engine mounts that I've got made I can just basically slot it back in bolt it up and it should be ready to rock with the uh, software that I've got so one question I'd like to ask everybody, and I'd like you to comment below really, is 
what do you think this RX-8 might actually be worth when I finish this project? Uh, general specs on it is it's a 2014, sorry, 2004 RX-8, 231 uh, BHP to begin with when it was uh, out the factory. It's going to have probably about a hundred brake, I think that's roughly about what the Nissan uh, 80 kilowatt motor puts out. Second gear, I reckon it'll probably do 0 to 60 in I don't know, 7 8 seconds. Third gear, maybe 9 10 seconds. And second gear will have a top speed of probably about 74 mile an hour with third, maybe 100 mile an hour, if the motor's strong enough to obviously overcome the resistance at those speeds. Range, I reckon, I'm, I reckon about 75 miles will be a conservative estimate there. The, obviously the original packs, the 30 kilowatt pack I've got is about 100 miles in the leaf. Uh, the Mazda's going to be about 70 kilos heavier than it was originally, which is a couple of hundred kilos heavier than the Nissan. So it might not be that much actually, it's around there somewhere, so it's going to be slightly heavier, so I expect the range to be less, I don't know what the drag coefficients on the two cars are, but I think 75 miles is a, is a good estimate of kind of range, but what's that worth? What would you pay for that car? Um, is it worth two grand, four grand, we're talking in pounds here, uh, 10 grand, I've just got no idea. And I guess the reason I'm asking is that I'm thinking I could probably knock these out pretty quickly. Once I've understood all this, which I'm getting pretty close to, uh, I can buy RX-8s 10 to the dozen. I can buy broken Nissan Leafs pretty easily as well. And um, I reckon within a month I could churn these out pretty quick. So is there a market? Can I sell these? Uh, what would you pay? Comment below. I really am interested to know if uh, it's just a loss leader. People aren't going to buy these. They're not interested. Or whether actually, go, do you know what? I would throw five grand at one of them, six grand at one of them, and then I have to work out how much it costs to make, and is there a market there? Yeah, I'm dead interested to know what your thoughts are on that. That's pretty much it for this week. I'll just try and keep everybody up to date as how it's going. Hopefully I can get that gearbox and motor back pretty quickly. Got some wiring to do, a lot of planning that I'm doing at the moment. I'm out there just staring at the car quite a lot to, to work out where stuff's gonna go, how it's gonna fit. Got a good, good, pretty good idea. I've bought all the metal work actually, uh, three mil steel. So I can build the cradle in the front for the batteries, and I'm thinking the batteries in the rear, I might drop them underneath the boot. So I can actually keep a lot of the boot space free. Uh, all the space where the exhaust's back box used to be, big area there, I reckon I can drop the batteries into that and uh, have them out of the way. So again, more fabrication there. I'm just trying to plan all that in my head. And I'll show you as I do that and show you how I do it. I'm not a brilliant welder, I'm not a brilliant fabricator, but I'm good enough that I can make the stuff that I need. And, uh, and if I can help anybody to learn how to do that, then that's great as well. So anyway, subscribe and, uh, and I'll see you in a week's